来从形来展现一下 AI 到底给我们带来哪些个变化。呃，其实说到行呢，我们讲出行也好，讲交通也好，就人类几万年从直立行走开始，是靠自己的双腿在在行，对吧？那么到几千年前呢，发明了这个呃马车，那么靠马车作为交通工具，持续了上千年。那么大概在一百多年以前吧，啊、呃，我们发明了汽车，汽车出现。啊、呃，所以就是汽车变成了人们一个非常非常主要的这个交通工具。马车和汽车中间还有一个阶段，什么呀？驴车，驴，<笑>反正就是好吧，用各种蓄力，对吧？对对对对，就是牲畜来的作为交通工具。嗯，但是汽车呢，改变了人们的这种出行方式。那么一百年过去 ，transportation， but actually automobiles has changed the way for us for the transportation. But hundreds of years ago, we also changed the way. For the transportation of vehicles, if we look back to a hundred years ago, automobiles have changed the way of transportation. It's very fast. I used to watch two sets of photos. So this is the photo on the same day, even though it was distancing was over 13 years. This is shot from the Fifth Avenue in the United States. So you could see in 1900, and we only have the、uh, horse carriage. But after we come to 1913, if we come to the same place, the same date, and you could see we are half of, still have the bustling streets, but we only have one horse carriage, and most of the transportation means are automobiles. So with Less than 20 years, people have changed the way of transportation from the carriage to automobiles. So today, in our live streaming, we will talk about the AI development. 虽然出乎我们的意料啊，衣食住行，它把行排在第一位，但这恰好也是对新时代人们生活需求的一个全新的解读。衣食住，这可能是过去。从人类文明起源，到现在，大家最关心的几件事情。但是随着人类文明社会的发展，尤其包括像我们现在消灭了绝对的贫困，人们开始对生活有了更高的要求，对幸福有了更多的追求。在这个时候，我们是否应该从一个全新的顺序来考虑我们的 AI 从什么地方作为我们的发力点，来给我们的生活带来更多？新的变化，对幸福感。所以我们觉得这个出行呢，它在汽车发明一百年之后会变成一个什么样子呢？或者说在，在百度的这个这个判断当中，未来的这个汽车会是什么样子？或者说 ，AI 跟汽车。And for Baidu, we always discuss about the future of the automobile. So what will come out of the combination of AI and the automobiles? And in the future. Automobile will become AI automobile. <laughs> so in the future, the robot will be in the shape of a automobile. So people may think of the transformer, but actually, what we are talking about, the AI transformer is different from the transformer itself. So as for a concept, I would like to show you what it looks like. <laughs> 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 if you say we're watching a movie and 
all of a sudden you actually open the door. It's quite different when you're sitting inside of the car. It feels like you're sitting inside of a cinema, and you don't have um, engines and the steering wheels. Actually, in this new type of the robotic cars, there's no driver, and it's quite comfortable and spacious. You will get used to this kind of new car. Because here, I, I don't have to hold on to the steering. Well, and I hope in the future our live streaming could be done inside of this car. Really like a private cinema. It's not just about the screen, and also we have a lot of sensors installed inside of this car. And also we have microphone, and also you could see for the window, also we could see the change of color. So I think I need to fasten my seatbelt. So probably this is a new concept of the AI car. So I would like to give you more introduction about the features of this car. Welcome back to Earth. So this is stunning, because in the past I do see some of the concepts. It must look like the real car. Maybe you will change the shape of the steering wheel, and for this one, I think it is quite different. The most important part for this car is it can realize the autonomous driving and also we're adding some new functions into this car. That's why we call this AI car or robotic car. So this car could move on its own, just like a robot. And of course, it depends on the wheels. As long as we could realize the um, autonomous driving, it will be an AI robot. And also we have sensors inside of this car, so you could talk to the car, and also it could respond to your questions. And sometimes if you want to book a ticket, the car can also help you to make the reservation. So it's just like an assistant. The car will follow your guidance and instructions. It is more than a car. And also it is more like an assistant in your life. Some of the work in the past will be done by human, but now a car can realize all of those functions. And this car will always be there. And you also have this kind of attachment of human. The more you use it, and more you have this uh, emotional ties with the automobile. Maybe sometimes if you feel sad, you could talk to the AI car. So it will be a very good partner to your life. And for the car, it will keep learning and will get to know more about yourself. For example, if you have a, a airport orchid in the, in the village, and then the car will help you to pick all the apples. It's just like a human. And it looks everything you talk about. So it is a completely different concept of cars. It is more like a scientific innovation. It could done things as robots did. So it is a robot on wheels. Or maybe we are having have put brains inside of the car. So that is the evolution of the cars in the future. It will become an AI car. And maybe in the future, the cars will help to tutor our kids. <laughs> so I think in the future, we could just put our kids inside of the car, and it knows how to help your kid. It is out of our imagination. So as you said, this car will continue to learn and exactly knows what you want. And also, this car will make some prejudgment to understand what you're going to do next. We will be out of control in the future. We have discussed this issue for a long time. Because we have utilized artificial intelligence, I think the ultimate goal is to 
provide support to people. AI is not an enemy for human beings. And for humans, we have developed a lot of weapons, and uh, we are based on the civilization. We have to uh, manage the AI, also and manage the operation of this AI. So for human beings, we have to make sure that AI is serving our people and they will not hurt human beings. Then I'm quite relaxed because my colleague Wang Jialing and also our CXO Jin Chen, they will have the first-hand experience of the AI car. Even though right now it is just a concept, but it is so safe and that I think we will have them to have experience of this AI car. Now let's go to Hebei. It's a special resort to see the first trial of this car. Hello to all. I'm Wang Jianing here. I'm this at a very, very beautiful resort. And this is the place actually we have our today experiment. And also introduce our special guest, Jing Chen. Hello to all, and uh, Jing Chen. So, so this time our AI experience officer. So we talk about look like your dress from high to tall. It's really like the a really shiny, and also it's the a metallic look and feel. It's quite some fiction merchandising. So we talk about actually we talk about the future travel so think about travel what do you think a lot of that time we mention about like the a travel in the future is like that really the blue lightings and really like have a different sh like the a feelings and bring you just in a sudden from one place to another because very soon we will experience the ai car because this is the kind of the car we have never seen before so where are we heading? So we have assistants already arrange everything very thoroughly. Yes, it's this app. It's your personal assistant. So what's my schedule this morning? You have already booked the A. Reading experience the a at the beach and also we have the other schedule for the car experience uh, right now the car is picking up maybe heading to that library so before we may only so learn about this concept but we have never seen the real car so we cannot really think about how exactly the shape or the look so just think about that car, an AI car or a robotic car. So maybe just like a transformer. So it's becoming a human body shape and say hi to me and then back to a car. So here we go. So this is really cool. It's cool, but also a little bit cute. Open the door, please. So where's the door exactly? Oh, here we go. So let's open that both sides. So like a big wing unfolded. Apollo Next in service. So let's get in. So we close the door. So welcome on board. If you get in position, then we close the door. So you hope you, our viewers can hear the sound. Actually, it's really that robotic sound. And right now, we are heading to the library. And also, we have already arranged the best route for you. 
If you need to fussy her seat belt. And always screen at the car before we departure. I always keep you safe. Right. We start. But actually, there's no steering steel wheel. So just like what we only have here, just a big screen. So it's like really not the a capsule in the space. And also look at here, this is a vast space. So it's really like we travel in space. So this is so smart. And also for the personal assistance, there's like no difficulty in communication and also give me really fast response, just like you talk to a real person. So that the a personal assistance, although it's an app, but actually can really understand your language, your speaking style. So it's really that you are tailor-made. PA. So also for the screen for the car, it also can be customized. Make your wish list. So really like a sky full of star. I want a sky full of star. No problem. So we change, adjust your seat, and then change the a color of the window shade. And then it's get ready to sleep, maybe. So, so comfortable in a moving car. I can tell you it's really comfortable, so you can really take a snap during your travel, and also the space so big enough, and even you can stretch your body inside the car. And also look at, actually, we have that the different scenarios. We talk about we want a sky full of star, so it can give you this really the good angle of the seats and shut down the a window shade. And it's very safe journey and also actually you could see that it really creates this really nice chill environment. We have an incoming call. Pick up the call. So hi. Hi, Wang Hello to you too, Mr. Wang. So this is really insane. So how's your experience? It's really great. I can tell you, actually, it's so high tech. It make my eye wide open. So actually, this is a very nice place to make your journey very safe, but also very comfortable, and also can change the uh, different scenarios for you. And I'm waiting here at the library. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. So this is a really intelligent. You look at this is a big screen. Want to go to the village? Yes. Okay. All right, we adjust the route and heading to the a village. So this is a really uh, convenient. So you look at about yourself, actually, if you want to change your route, you need to really change by your hand, by yourself on your phone. But look at here, actually, it's really the self-driving and also the route change, actually, also just ask for your permission. You do not need to really change the route by yourself. Oh, I know. 
So when we stop, we can see a passenger in front of the car crossing the road. And also we talk about that the braking actually is not really a sharp one. So sometimes when we actually the a brake the car is quite sharp, abrupt. But look at here, it is really smooth. Right now we slow down because just now we had a car in front of us. So we talk about like for the car, for the passengers actually is really smart, can identify the objects in front of the car. I think even smarter than us. What are we doing? Oh, we make a U-turn, right? Because we change our routes, so we make a U-turn here and change our way to the village. So we have the a radar and also we have the cameras to make sure that we can observe the a big picture of the whole traffic, 360 degrees. So for the people when we driving, actually there are some the a really area of the a blind. So sometimes we cannot really see the full picture of the traffic. But look at the car. Actually, nothing can really stop our journey. All right, the village is on our right hand side. We park our car at the side of the road. Right now it's safe to open the door. So open the door. So it also can help you to screen the surrounding areas to see whether it's safe enough to open the door. So look at actually, it's always protect you so safe. So actually help to protect and screening the car all the time. And so we receive the mission card. Thank you. So talk about the a future travel and ancient travel. So we're heading to the a conference venue. So we talk about the future way. That's the a way we are right now because we are on board of the AI car. And also for the ancient means. So maybe it's riding on the horse. So it's actually it's really a the AI attraction way because a lot of people really like to take photos because this is something really insane and we have never seen this before and right now we change our route to the a jockey club so we change the route again all right we on the journey again so you could see that's very very smooth Start and also we talk about the jockey club. Actually, it's really f sometimes people saying online that it's always the a fully occupied, fully booked. So we ask our personal assistants, Xiaodu, please help me to book a horse. No problem. We booked a class for you. And this is charge, it's not free. Do you want to pay? Yes. So you could see actually we give you this is a horse from airline. And also you could see that we have the appointment for you. And also because actually at the same time you have another appointment and we arrange that appointment for you tomorrow so you have a time to try the a horse class today and also we paid for you so you could see as a personal assistant that can help you book ticket book classes and also help you to arrange your route and also can help you to change your schedule and also actually just in the car actually this is the really like your like a cinema a lot of the a tailor made services available look at the whole screen and also the whole car this space actually when the door closes it's just so isolated from the outside world so this is a really nice experience and also we talk about safety 
is really actually protect you really well. It's not just a car. <laughs> so it's very safe <laughs> and very smart. So we talk about the high tech, but it's way beyond our imagination. So this is really improve our way of life, the quality of life, actually. And we talk about that, the a future way of travel and the ancient way of travel. So today, actually, so like I'm in the, the a science fiction film. So we talk about in the future, we want fast, we want safe, and also it's tailor-made. So we arrive at this jockey club. We have arrived at the jockey club, and also you already see some of the horses. And after the ho uh, horse riding, you can actually have lunch at the beach and then go back to the private car. So here we go. So quite look forward to the horse riding. I'm curious what kind of horse will this AI car book? Let's have a look. It feels like actually I'm coming from future, and now we're traveling to the past. It's quite magical. And probably this is your horse. And also we have a tattoo on this horse. It's quite stunning, and and today we actually experience the AI car, and also now we're trying to ride a horse, and that is the ancient way of the transportation. Let's pose for a photo. Look at that. The two girls are very happy ride on the AI car, the Apollo cars. They experience the future, and right now they're riding the horse. And for us, we have to talk to each other here. So actually, we understand the technology behind the robotic cars. So here, I, I used to sit inside of the car. I think that is quite an amazing experience. Actually, I could uh, feel the surprises from Jianning and the Jinchen, and especially when they were getting inside of the car and for the passerby to uh, actually taken photos of the car. They never seen this kind of car before. And also when we are watching the video and robbing, I believe if you look at all the things you're, you're maybe you're thinking for the two girls, they're also AI figures. <laughs> so actually, Robin asked me why there's so many wires for Jincheng, but because that is the wire connecting the microphone. Actually, I pay attention to one of the details in the video, and for the amend the vehicle, when it encounters some of the other vehicles and the passengers, the car will get slower. But uh, our focal point is that uh, for the car, maybe it is rowing some of the traffic regulation. So for the AI car, they have to abide by all the traffic regulations. And also, this will protect other passengers in the other cars. So for the AI course, you actually encounter a lot of complex tasks. So we have been working on the AI course for over eight years, and we keep improving the functionalities of the course. And for CXO Jinchen, uh, I believe she is very excited, and she just pay inside of the car. And if I am the Xiaodu, the AI device, I will ask her to uh, provide her password for the bank account. So I believe in the future, the AI robots will build trust with human beings. 
So for some of the operations, maybe you only need to do once. And so for the AI robots, it will pick up your habits immediately. And you don't have to repeat every time. So I still feel I'm watching a science fiction film. I think maybe this kind of technology only limited to certain districts. But how our normal people can have this experience in the future? And actually, for the concept cops, they actually pointed out the future direction for the development of the automobile. But it takes time. And during this process, I think the key for the AI cars is the autonomous driving. First of all, we have to realize the autonomous driving, and then we could add in more functions inside of the car. Now we already have a lot of driverless cars. And for some of the consumers, they may have this question. When they are able to have a autonomous driving car, and when they are able to be drive inside of the route. So actually today, I would like to release one new brand. This is our fast run by two cars. This is actually a autonomous driving travel service platform. So just now our CSO Jinchen is using this platform. The reason why we call this Luobo fast run because it has the same pronunciation as robots. So that's why we are calling this Robot Fast Run. So I was thinking, because your English name is Robin, maybe the Robot Fast Run is, have some relationship with your name. So actually today we'll just announce a uh, release, this service platform, the Robot Fast Run. It already open to the general public. So for example, if you saw some of the cars, have a logo with Robert Fast Run, <laughs> you could make appointments through your application. Right now, because of the limitation of the traffic, so we have limited licenses for this car. So now this service is open in four cities in limited districts. So for some of the places we are able to provide this autonomous driving service. So for example, in Beijing, you could have the experience of the autonomous driving in Yizhuang. So if you are living in Yizhuang, you must see a lot of this kind of autonomous driving cars. But in the past, we don't have this brand, the robot fast run service platform. It is expected that within three years, this autonomous driving service will cover over 30 cities. So I believe right now more people they already downloaded the service platform, the Robert Fast Run, and they will go to Yizhuang District to have an experience of this car. So I'm actually very curious about this function. So I would like to book a car from the Robert Fast Run platform and actually um, choose a very complicated route. <laughs> and also there were so many passengers in that route. Let's see my experience from the video.
，体验还是很不错的啊。他能认出你吗？车？他，你有没有一进去墨镜一摘 ？Very nice experience. Will the AI car recognize yourself? Maybe when you get inside of the car and you say, "My boss, you don't have to pay for the service." So how do you feel when you're inside of the car? So when you're sitting inside of the car, it doesn't feel any difference, just like a normal travel. But you are sitting inside the car, you could pay attention to the complexity of the traffic. Uh, for some restricted areas, you are able to enjoy this autonomous driving. So this means actually for all of these cars, it could realize autonomous driving, and actually we don't have a driver anymore. And the car could run on its own. So if you pay attention to our last year's World Conference, we already released a, a 5G autonomous driving system, and also we have a driver on the cloud, and also the driver will try to control the AI car, and what's the difference for this year? And for this year, for one driver, it could pay attention or monitor the cars for several cars. And now you can see we have a higher efficiency. So for each one of the cars, uh, we are able to have only one driver to control all the cars. And also we could see that many people would like to have the experience of the autonomous driving and also more and more cars are available to have this function. And also we have to consider the capacity of the technology. And we have to improve the efficiency. For example, we need to only have like one driver from the cloud to control several cars. So last year in the Baidu World Conference, they have actually talked about the advantages of the driver on the cloud. And it feels like these drivers are playing games, and at the same time, they actually get paid for controlling all of these cars. And hopefully in the future, we can have more positions available for this post. Naturally, today the Baidu World Conference kicks off. And uh, first of all, we understand um, the role of the AI in travel. For example, the changes brought by AI in the areas of travel. And in the future, it may also provide us more conveniences in the travel. And also, you talk about the latest achievement, that is the autonomous driving technology. Uh, but right now, in most of our roads, we could see we still have uh, uh, drivers uh, inside of the car. And we need to understand, in such an era, how can we enjoy the benefits brought by AI? So right now, more and more people are integrating the AI function into the private car. And for this year, Baidu set up a new company called the Extreme Cars. With this company, it will combine all of the cutting-edge technologies inside of the cars and some of these functions available in the market. So in the upcoming two to three years, for all of the ordinary cars, they will integrate some AI functions inside of the cars. So just stay tuned with us. And in the future, we'll release more information about these cars. And of course, I have to mention the Baidu Apollo car. Maybe some people, they don't want to change their cars yet. And every year, China will sell over 20 million cars. So I think in the future, more cars will be inside of the market, especially for the Apollo cars. They have a lot of cutting-edge technology, and we will do our best to serve our clients. We try to make sure all the cars have the autonomous driving function. This is not just limited to the cars produced by Baidu, but also cars produced by other manufacturers. And more and more cars in the future could do the autonomous driving. 
If you want to have a safe, efficient travel, you don't need to have a smart car. You also need to have a smart route. So that's why we need to include the AI technology inside of the cars. And uh, this will help us with the uh, traffic management. I believe we already seen a lot of progress. So I would like to turn over to my colleague, Li Zhengyu, to tell us more about this technology. All right, we already experienced the eye-opening session. So actually, we saw uh, the a robot first run. That's the a high-tech intelligent vehicle. So that's just our first present for you. Uh, just the appetizer. So we'll also show you more in our live stream. And this is CA Baidu World Conference 2021. And Baidu is a leading AI company with strong internet foundation. And at this time, we will also virtually host its annual flagship technology conference, it's Baidu World 2021, and in partnership with CMG. And now, please allow me to welcome our next guest speaker, Mr. Li Zhengyu, Senior Corporate Vice President of Baidu and the General Manager of Intelligent Driving Group. Well, good morning to all. <laughs> so you could see that we have a seat just now. Your boss, Robin, only could standing there. No, ch no seats, no chair for him. So we talk about that, the a uh, your department, your BU, actually is intelligent driving group. So basically, we could tell from the architecture of your company, actually, you could tell it's a group. So basically, within this group, we have a lot of the uh, drivers, uh, the uh, corporation, and also we like to empower more drivers to join this ecosystem to build up this whole platform, the whole Apollo platform. So we mentioned about a portal, right? So in Beijing, we had a certain area in Yizhuang. Actually, it's good for use a Polar Robo Taxi. I haven't used this service before. We talk about actually hope one day if not we could use this robot taxi to CMG headquarters in Beijing. That would be so convenient. So you could tell actually just within one year. Actually, right now we already wrote out to four cities. So our where plan is to hope to roll out to 30 cities and hope that we can bring this benefit to more people in different places. So we talk about this driver less technology, like we apply the technology to robot fast run. This is just newly launched brand. And also we talk about a lot of cars, actually. They are ready to use that the a supporting driving function. So I'm not really understand. We talk about L level. So right now up to L5, right? This is the highest level. You're good. You have some knowledge. I can tell I can speak L and also I know five. So I just say L5. But I don't know really. It's like, so this is really the highest level of driverless technology, basically. So any road, we can use L5, basically use robots to drive the car. That's L5. So for us, let's say if we bought the car so early, what kind of AI function uh, could be suitable for our car? Of course. So first of all, let's talk about the new cars. We have that AI assistant. Another is AI driver. 
uh, already equipped to see a new cars, new produced cars. So first we talk about AI systems. So very easy, simple to understand. So in, under certain scenarios, we use the AI assistant to help you like you put down your phone and just call Xiao Du, Xiao Du, and I like, want to listen to the music, want to listen to the audiobook. So actually, you can talk to Xiao Du, so you do not need to really look down while driving. So still like sleep, split your attention while driving, right? So right now, just talk to your car. And right now, a lot of people really experience this function, and they actually raise higher requirement. So talk about during that conversation, can we provide even sweeter response? We don't want to really respond in the cold, robotic language tone. So right now we have that really be a warm survey. So you could see that we have that the image. So you can build up your own assistant. You could choose the a, the tone you like to listen, and also can name that your assistant. So basically, that's the really like tailor made the personal assistant. So we talk about Chinese, the Valentine Day. So actually, your assistant also like remind you earlier that you need to prepare at least flowers for the Valentine Day, and also like based on your the a preference, and also like your personal assistant can help you to change the route to choose the a better route for you, or to like suggest some the a news that you would like to read. So we talk about car is not a car, it's not a vehicle for travel. So it's really a person in your life with worms, like a company you and also like know you really well. So we talk about like a driver, like assistant. And also at a certain scenario, actually self-driving can help you. We talk about like parking your car, <laughs> and also like picking apples. Uh, when you shop, uh, you don't know where is available like a parking lot, so you just need to go, like look around, just travel from B A from the B one to B two to B three. Actually, it really took a long time to find available parking lot, but right now just use your phone. That the a robot actually you can call the robot in the parking lot. That robot robot will come to you and guide your car to the available parking lot. So that's really efficient and save a lot of time for you. And also we had a test ride. Invited the a experienced drivers, at least a ten years of driving experience, and it's a competition basically to compare that like, who parked the car better. So that's the a driver with ten years experience and AI car. So we talk about for us for human brain. So for ourselves, we think we're good enough in parking the car. If we compare to AI, actually, the AI is just so precise, so accurate. For us, we just like basically we in that slot is okay. But for AI, just so accurate. So for AI, like a driver, like a personal assistant, you could see actually the functions enriched. So, uh, question is, if, let's say, I steal my old car, really conventional vehicle, is it possible I still can experience the benefit brought by AI? 
For the a newly assembled car, I actually could see they already equipped this kind of the AI function. Of course, that's a step by step, and I was really saying that just the a newly the a car just rolling out from the assembly line, they already driven less. Actually, you could see. <laughs> As Robin introduced, we don't want to build a better car or a smarter car, and also for the road, we also want to equip with intelligence functions. So we talk about a driverless function not only for car, actually is only and also for the roads. So this should be a combination. So we talk about travel. We don't want to stuck in the way, right? So like really the travel, the a traffic jam is really big headache. So in the Hebei province, we worked with the a local officials. Actually, we built a green belt on the road. <laughs> so it's not for the green purpose. Not for. Really, that the a environmental purpose. Actually, we build this because that we don't want to encounter the right traffic lights. So that is why we call it the green belt. So actually, this is really something we eager to have a couple of years ago. That like we don't want to stop, right? We just want to actually have a button, and really every time we encounter the right traffic light, we can just press the button and change it to green light. And right now, it's come to a reality. So right now, actually, if Let's say counter six green lights, we can cut to three. So basically, that's a green light, right? Like traffic lights is always there. Just like we calculate so well, can help you to manage the time that you encountered the green lights. So basically, actually, we can help you to just get a very smooth road, actually, just green light all the way. So we can arrange you that. So how you realize that? So basically, this AI, a technology from driverless technology, not only applied to the car, also applied to the road. This is what we talk about. We apply the a driverless technology to the a travel. So we could see that we should let the lights see the cars. So the lights can identify it's a passenger car or it's a buses. So like the 100 meters away from the lights and how long does it take from its current position to the a crossroad? So and also we can calculate the travel flow. So we can basically can count the time. So basically before just the a car look at the lights. Right now the lights can understand more and better about the traffic. So we talk about if it's quite an empty road, and this can have a longer green time, the green light time. So basically, like the lights can talk to the car. So let the lights talk. So you could see that through the whole road, like the 12 lights, travel lights can all turn to green. So it's not just one crossroad. Basically, that's the a whole network. The whole the surrounding areas, all the A travel lines, they should build in the same network. So this is something really better for the people day to day life. <laughs> so this is really bring the benefit to people. We talk about like human being, our brain is way. This is too much for us because we need to calculate the car coming from different directions at a different time period. So this is a loads of work. Only AI can do the job. We talk about we utilize that AI technology, we use big data, and also a lot of different DA cross discipline knowledge all coming together to solve these issues. This is what we're good at. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this really good news. We talk about it's not in the future. We talk about right now, this moment, we already have benefited from AI. Thank you so much.
的是 AI 对我们的出行未来可能带来的变化。So we just talk about the function of the AI and its role in the future travel. But right now, AI has been used in many sectors, especially every walks of our lives. So I'd like to understand in which aspects that we will enjoy the benefits brought by AI. Now I would like to introduce. Uh, Mr. Shen Dou, who is the executive vice president of Baidu and also the general manager of the mobile ecosystem group. So, Mr. Shen, well, I would like to know during in life, I believe we have a lot of AI products. I am actually very fond of equipment and devices. In my home, I would like to use many AI devices and AI equipment. So actually, so from a few years ago, some products they claim themselves as the AI products, but they're not as good as AI products. So as Robin introduced、uh, the AI cars, there are a lot of cutting-edge technologies. And so, for all of these technologies, we have been developing for many years, and also we could use some of these technologies in our daily life. Just like, for example, in Baidu application, you could actually use a voice to do some searches. And for example, you have the、um, Xiaodu application, and this is very fashionable. Very young people, many young people, would like to use this voice recognition function, and this will help us to improve efficiency for our communication with the devices. For example, sometimes when you want to book a ticket, and if you want to charge your phone, or you want to. Filling some of the petrol inside your cars, you could use all of these AI functions. And in your life, for example, if you have some like, conflicts, you have some difficulties in your life. If it is very complicated, and、um, actually you could find an expert from Baidu, and these people will help you to tackle all of these problems. Wow, that is quite amazing. For example, <laughs> you have a fight with your neighbor. In the past, you're saying you may ask the police to help you to resolve this problem, but in the future, probably you will depend on AI to resolve all of this problem. Uh, we have a spokesperson for Baidu,、uh, Mr. Gong Jun, and、uh, also we have give a lot of task. To Gong Jun to see how he handle all of those difficulties with AI. Hello, good morning. I'm Gong Jun. I'm actually um in the film right now, and today I've received a very mysterious task, and all of these missions have been put inside of these boxes. Let's see what I have to do. I have two cars here. Good morning. I'm glad you are becoming the. Spokesperson for Baidu. So here we have three missions. If you pass all the missions, I will give you a prize. Let's see what's written on the second card. Please buy a ticket of the Sunny Sports that has been posted on this poster. So as I am the spokesperson for Baidu application. I could solve all of these problems. First, I would like to take a photo. The palace for Emperor Qin. Yes, I used to have a play in this, and also I need to book a ticket. So let's see how I can handle this ticket for the palace for Emperor Qin. Let's see if I could book a hotel. And here I could see all the hotels nearby listed on this application. And also, we are going back to the hotel. You could actually search novel from the application. And for the Baidu application, it could actually、um, recognize the photos. And if you are visiting some of the tourist attractions, you could take photos. And it feels like you are bringing yourself with the encyclopedia. So now I already solved the first question. Let's see what are the other missions. Another card again. 
So one of my friends recommended a very delicious um, restaurant. And also there are some like they and some local vegetables inside of these spicy pots, but I don't have to worry about it. So once again, I would like to use the search engine for the Baidu application. I would like to uh, put inside some of the keywords. Well, I already got some of the answers, and um, some of people, uh, for example, this one, and he actually have a video call with me. So for the restaurant you are talking about, I always visit that place, and especially when I look at the photo, I could immediately identify which restaurant is that. Thank you so much for your support. So this is the ask function from the Baidu application. If you do have questions, make sure you post the question inside of this section, and then I, they will help you with the answers. I already finished the second mission. Now it is my third mission. So mission three, recognize the local specialties inside of the package. So this is the Lotus. Uh, I, I do recognize it. So what is this one? It looks like a fruit. But I never tasted it before. And what is this one? Uh, for these two, I really don't know what it is. But no worry, I have Baidu application. First, I would like to take photos and it will help to recognize it. So this is one of the melon and this is the shuhu. I don't know how to eat this. Uh, inside of the Baidu application, you have a general introduction about this dendrobe, and also it provides me with some links so I could buy this kind of dendrobe. I already finished the three tasks. Actually, I already prepared a special prize. Stay tuned with us. Thank you, Gongju. I should use Baidu application earlier, especially last year and actually when I was doing one live streaming. I look at one tree, I, I don't know which tree is that. I actually argue with one of my guests. But at uh, that time, I believe I made a mistake and um, did not recognize that tree that is a Chinese flowering crab apple. If I have Baidu application, I'm able to search for that tree so I understand what is that. Especially in spring, uh, when you are coming out with your kids and some people asking questions, what is this flower? If I don't know what is it, it is quite shameful. So. I think it's best for us to bring with the Baidu application. And just now Gongjun said he prepared us with a special prize. What is that? Please look at the big screen. Good morning, everyone. I'm the VO figure of Gong Jun. My name is Jun Jun. So just clap your finger, and then you could uh, book appointments of your tickets, and also 
the hotels. If you have any questions, for example, uh, some of your emotions, your love life, and also some of your daily life, this is what we call the AI service from the Baidu application. So everything you could think of, you could find out correspondence services in Baidu application. And the Baidu application will provide answers for us, and we could embrace a better life. Hope we could meet in Baidu application. Thank you, Junjun. So this is a AI or a VR figure of Gongjun. To last year in the Baidu World Conference, we do have a similar VR figure. And this year we could see we have some improvement for this VR figure. Five years ago, I invited an AI expert for a lottery, and he said, uh, with the improvement of AI, and within five years, we could have the uh, VR figure to replace human beings. So, but still, we think the position that uh, the anchor will not be replaced by the VR figure. And for example, this time we have made some improvement and also we have some audios for the VR figure. And we are using the voice of Gong Jun. And actually you could use the voice of Gong Jun from Baidu application. For example, you could have Gong Jun to read a novel for you. So by doing that, more people could get to know Gong Jun and make friends with him. So in Baidu application, you can actually create your own audio package. So you could record a few sentences, and then you are able to deliver your own audio package. So this is the function brought by the AI. In the past, for the audio package, you only have a few to choose from. Uh, but right now, you could hear the voice from anyone you like. You just have to record a few sentences, and in the future, your voice will be available in the internet. This is the improvement of our life and also the improvement of the technology. And also, AI is still advancing, and Baidu has invested a lot in this technology. And also, the voice recognition of Baidu application is above 98%. So it is actually better than the ears of our human beings. Because when we talk to each other, we always ask each other. Can I say again? Because I, sometimes I, I cannot um, make a good reaction. So I think if with the help of the AI, we could fastly recognize your voice and understand what you're talking about. So for the voice recognition for the human ears, we only recognize 98% of the information. And for AI, for example, if you are speaking very fast, it also could uh, help to recognize what you are talking about. And also, it could help to um, understand the whispering, which in a very low voice. <laughs> I believe you don't use this kind of application often. So maybe you could have a try, especially for the voice recognition and the audio recognition. So just say a few sentences to see whether Baidu application can recognize your voice. Just use a very long sentence. How to do it? So what are the most popular functions? So first, you speak a long sentence. In the very fast beat, are you sure? So actually, it could recognize your voice better than human beings. Just try it. OK. <laughs> well, by the application can only recognize human voice. So for this beat, uh, actually, I don't know what I'm asking about. Now I try to speak faster. So actually, right now, he's asking a very fast question. 
You could see AI already gave you the answer, and then I also asked another question. Where is the hometown for this author? I speak really fast, but actually, I really can't tell. So maybe we actually, you could see that actually it's really just a speak in a fast speed. I also can recognize your word, and also if you ask questions in a fast speed, and also can provide answers. So we talk about actually the recognition rate reached higher than 98 percent. And also, actually, AI not just stop here. I actually, also can really follow your thoughts, your logic, to predict your next question. So ask your first question. So what's the name of China's first Mars Pro rover? The first rover is Zhu Rong. Correct. When was the time it landed on the right planet? It arrived on May 15, 2021. So this is not fast enough because of this environment and also because of the a lot of different noises here. Uh, so it's not fast enough. And some question actually is use a combination. Uh, it's a part in Chinese, part in English. You know, some of the technology terminology is only in English. We're like your family, right? Your family scenario. Especially that because like my wife, because my wife is not Chinese, like sometimes we have a quarrel and she just like argue with me in English. So sometimes I couldn't really understand. So AI can help me, right? Think about that. Normally, the quarrel in your life with your wife. You need to cry, dear. And AI can really also understand the Chinglish. So, so you need to cry, dear. But actually, that's in Chinese, more or less the similar pronunciation is that you have a parcel to pick up. So for ladies, we really like to unbox the gifts, a lot of shopping online. That's the most happy time for us is when we receive the parcel. So basically, you could see like AI yeah, really understand you. And also because we have a big support from the big data, so we could really understand human being could see AI yeah, really so intelligent. And also sometimes you have a really hard question that you cannot really answer. You don't know the answer. Of course you are so talented and you're full of knowledge. But for myself, it's like sometimes like a lot of friends actually, they just have a really hot debate. But for me, actually, I couldn't even catch up the key word. So I just use AI to check that the key word, what they're talking about, then I can join their talks. So maybe I try to ask a question to Baidu app. So what's the score of my 
university entrance exam. <laughs> so you didn't take the exam because you actually uh, recommend it for the mission to Beida University, Peking University. Actually, this is a really correct answer, and I didn't say it. The uh, Baidu said it. Right? And the also answer is really reliable and also actually transparent. Actually, in a different context, you just ask the question to Baidu app. Of course, due to the interest of time, we cannot really ask every question we want to get the answer. But you could tell, actually, this is a really good question and also the function and also actually in different dialogue. So maybe Cantonese, <laughs> Henan dialect, right now available in Mandarin, Cantonese, yes. But we talk about dialect, actually, there are a lot of different dialects in China. Cantonese is one, right now is available. You can ask questions in Cantonese. Mandarin is also OK. And when we read the a literature in English, <laughs> so this is actually based on my personal needs. I sometimes I reading the literature in English. Sometimes I couldn't really know the words. Actually, you, you can use Baidu app as well. You can take a picture of that page. And then Baidu can tell you that the a pronunciation of that word and also the meaning of that word. And in addition, the third function maybe can meet your need because you have two kids, right? Right now, because like the eight children, they are so talented, they actually full of knowledge, so they ask you the really challenging questions. And if they ask you the questions that the A was the A shape of the dinosaurs, especially what kind of what the A sound of that the A Tyrannosaurus. So actually, it's really hard to describe. So Baidu app, actually, that's the key to search by themselves, like a panda. So what's how panda look like? So actually, we have the page dedicated for kids. It's not really the rocket science for kids. And you could see I use AR inside. So just in the 3D, in their familiar environment. So we put uh, the Trinosaurus in their like really daily scenario. So actually, it's really easy for kids to understand. So you could see there are a bunch of functions available. And I believe that you always can find your needs by using Baidu app. So you could see actually your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day work, family. Actually, you could see this is so sweet assistance to you. And how Baidu can make it available because AI technology. Because Baidu, actually, we have devoted ourselves in AI industry for so long. We understand quite well about our target consumers. And also with the changing of the society, we also notice that the people also change their way of life. And also we have Baidu search engine that always help us to provide the answer, like say people change their way of life. So based on that, we know that in terms of way of life, way of work, way of health care actually all changed. So you could see from our search engine, you could see that's the a live service. You could see a lot of things actually right now move online. You could see booking tickets, the a fast delivery hotel taxi has increased by 270 percent. And also we talk about the a night economy needs, economic needs actually increased by 189 percent. And also third, actually, is because of COVID-19. Under these big back Around. People pay more attention about the house. So you could see that people are searching the house information service are now increased by 207 percent. 
So that is why uh, drives by to invest more in the health uh, sector. So we have the a Baidu the encyclopedia in the house, and also speak of that, we invite our the <laughs> hepatological surgery department. <laughs> so that Baidu is so helpful to me because that really helped to solve my day to day difficulties. And this is our special guest, Dr. Dong Jia Hong. So once again, our special guest, Mr. Dong Jia Hong from Hepatology Sur Surgery Department. So we talk about actually we can feel big data, AI play its role. Actually, I'm coughing and also by some of the a medicine. And actually, two days later, a lot of apps actually suggest the different kinds of medicine to me. And also not the long later than that, actually, they also recommend me the a nursing home to me. And actually, I don't know why. Of course, you do not need to buy in that. Actually, it's very important that you need to educate yourself. You need to learn more knowledge about that. So that is why we need that academician dong. So actually, for academician dong, have you received this kind of message? So there are a lot of the messages you should do this. If you don't do this, then you're in the trouble. If I like, say you do this, you're in the trouble. Actually, there are different titles of articles, but actually we receive a lot of these kind of posts to our phone. A lot of this information, correct? The majority of them actually, yes, is correct information. And also you bring some questions with you, right, today? Yes. So Big Data Plus AI, a lot of that's the A, the a questions related to the a hepatology sector. <laughs> so you could see that this is a question actually produced by AI plus big data. And also we look at it, this is the, a question quite interested to the people born after 1990s. And there's some common sense related to liver. And you could tell which is correct, which is wrong. So we could see that the first one is like if you a good good at drinking, which means that that's the a function of your liver is so strong, and also we talk about if you're very slim. And maybe you're not really suffering from that fatty liver. And also, we talk about the third one. If you do not really have that the cloasma on your face, which means or if you have that close asthma on your face, means that you may suffering from the disease at your liver. So let's first look at the first one. If you're a good drinker, basically it means that you have a really strong liver. So basically it means that your liver is so strong in detoxing. So the first one is wrong. A lot of people think that I can drink, I'm good at drinking, basically means that my liver is so strong, so nice. But actually, we found that the people suffering from the disease at your liver, you quite actually have that means. We talk about that if not really easy to be drunk, but still you need to pay attention to the a derivative or the 
ramification of the alcohol. So we talk about actually overdrank. That of course bring the damage to your liver. So that doesn't mean that nothing that alcohol not good to your is good to your body. So we talk about some people actually that the have the, a strong capacity for the a liquor. Basically means that a good at the a capacity of a decomposition. <laughs> so I think in the future I don't have to drink too much, especially for people who love drinking. They have to control themselves to protect their liver. So. As a hepatology expert, so how's your capacity? Anyway, you have to protect yourself, so do not drink too much. Because even though you're an expert in the hepatology, you should not drink too much. So that is the uh, first statement. So let's see the other one. And so the second one, and the slim person will not be infected with the fatty liver. For me, on average, so I'm about 180 centimeter, and my weight is 56 to 57 kilogram. But when I am tested for physical examination, and the doctors remind me be cautious about the fatty liver because I think I'm not too fat. And actually, that relates to the detoxification of your body and also your metabolism. I would like to give you more explanation. Even though you're quite thin, still you're likely to get fatty liver, uh, especially if you have a poor metabolism capacity, and uh, maybe it will also result in a high degree of the blood fat, especially in your liver. If there is a big accumulation of the blood fat, it will actually lead to the um, fatty liver. And also, if you are ill nutrition, and also, it is likely that you will get fatty liver. I think even, even though you are trying to lose some weight, you have to stick to a very healthy diet. OK, let's move on to the next statement. I would like to choose the third one. So people are saying, if you have asthma on your face, it means that um, it is a symptom for liver disease. Well, if you are infected with the liver disease, it may change the color on your face. For example, it will show dark skin. For example, you have like a uh, yellow face, but um, it has no relation to the clone asthma. Mm, for some girls, they uh, pay a lot of attention about the cold asthma. Maybe if they are getting too much sunlight, also they will have the cold asthma. So all right, finally we get the one statement right. We have another two items. So if you are tested normal for the liver function, does that mean you have a healthy liver? No, definitely that's no. So if you are passing a physical examination, even though you are tested normal for your liver function, but it doesn't mean that your liver is healthy. For liver, you have a lot of functions. There are many indexes. If certain aspects have been damaged severely, and then it will change all the functionalities of the liver. So even though you are tested normal for your one uh, liver function, doesn't that mean you have a healthy liver? So last one, 
if you are using a disqualified taint or dye, uh, meaning that it will also cause a damage for the liver. Because for some of these dyes, they have some chemical elements. When these chemical elements enter inside of your body, and this will actually um, impair the function of the liver. For example, it will enter into your body from your hair and enter into your liver. So we only have one statement that is accurate. For the other, there are false statements. So this is also shows the importance of the big data. Because for this big data, they could help us to learn more about ourselves and bring us more information about health. It is more targeted and more accurate. Just as Mr. Dong said, uh, for some of this information, maybe people are not paying enough attention. So this is very important for us to educate the public. With all this valid information, people don't know how to stick to a healthy life. And some people, they're over panicking about their symptoms. And uh, this will actually cause a waste of medical resources. Because for some people, they're not sick. They're just too panic. So that's why we need to have more information in the Baidu application. And if you are able to get us to some effective and more valid information so they understand their situation, they don't need to come to the hospital and waste so much medical resources. So we need uh, the medical workers, for example, Dr. Dong, to provide more education. And actually, tomorrow is the festival for doctors. I would like to wish all of the doctors a healthy life and a happy life. Thank you very much for your introduction. So now I understand the way not to use by the application. So probably I should just call Mr. Do. Well, actually, I will not disturb the expert from the hepatology. So we need to use more uh, of the uh, internet resources, the Baidu application. I think this is very important to promote health in China. For all of the doctors, we have actually engaged ourselves in educating the public on the health information. There are a lot of uh, rumors on the internet. Some people are not able to identify which information are right and which ones are wrong, especially there are a lot of misleading information in the area of TCN or health information. So for the general public, uh, we should make good use of the big data and the Baidu application. For example, uh, people they are caring about their health condition. And for example, uh, people are thinking if they have a very good capacity of drinking, maybe they don't have any problem with liver. But that is not correct. And you should enter some of keywords in the Baidu application so that you could browse more information and uh, you could judge which one are correct and which one are incorrect. By having all of this information, you could get to know more about the scientific knowledge. I believe in this era of AI. Robots and AI will change the way for us to communicate this health information. And this will also change the way for us to provide medical services. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the doctors to provide more support of the health information and the big data. For some of the uh, information, especially for the medical information, we need this information to be verified by experts. And uh, for Baidu application, we have over 1,500 doctors and medical workers in different disciplines. And also, we have added over 10,000 items about the medical information. And each day, we have tens of thousands of people browsing out of this information. So on a daily basis, we are trying our best to educate the public about the health information. Once again, thank you very much for your contribution and introduction. If you have any questions, make sure you log in to the Baidu application to know more about the health information. Now we have another guest, 
Mr. Jin Kun from Baidu Smart Living Group. So now we'll get to know more products from Baidu. So today I will introduce with you four AI products. And also today I also bring a lot of gifts. <laughs> After you watch the live streaming of each one of the products, make sure you stay to the very last minute to join us for the lottery. So first I would like to introduce with you the very first product. So this is the AI screen developed by Baidu. So this is called Tian Tian. And this is also gaining some awards from German. And for example, for this small screen, you could uh, put it in different angles. So for example, the first one is uh, placed in a horizontal position, and the other one is in a vertical position. And also, you could actually play karaoke with this screen. Now you could see there are two microphones here. You could actually sing a song with this device. So Mr. Sa Beiling, and actually he doesn't want to sing. But um, maybe today you could have a try, because you are an excellent singer. So now I would like to use this one. I would like to um, try to pick a song for you to sing. All right, I already ordered a song. So this is um, C from Zhang Yusheng. So we already see, hear the music. Now it's your turn. This is quite funny. So can we connect this application or this um, tablet with your home devices? Yes, actually, if you are using this in your home, so actually you could connect this with your uh, lights and curtains and everything you have in your house. So for this product, you could actually watch movies and you could listen to the music. And if you have this one in your home, it would be much better than your mobile phone. And also prepare a short video to uh, introduce this AI tablet. All right, let's watch the movie, uh, the, the video about the Tian Tian application and the tablet. All right, you could see that this is a big screen, and of course larger than your phone, and also with the uh, speakers, and also basically you can enjoy that the karaoke as well. Then we really want to know the price, right? We want that a lot of families actually can afford this one. So we talk about this one. The price is? T10, 1,599, T8, 1,199. 
And this is actually the special prize only for today. So you can place orders at Baidu app, or you can place orders at JD.com. You could see actually just to stir the price of a smartphone. So we talk about the T10 and T8, just the differences of the size of the screen. So actually could tell actually the price today, this is actually so affordable. While actually everyone have that access to this kind of high tech at home. So this really actually bring your life towards a more high tech end. And this is just one product. Another one, even larger screen, also maybe can enjoy karaoke. And this one, this is a huge screen V86. And totally controlled by, by voice. So look at I'm um, 185. Centimeters tall. So it's a similar as my height. So you could see. So this is 86 inches. So it's called a B86 screen. So you can please let us do a smaller screen on your the dining table. And also, actually, these two can connect together. So let me show you this. So do play a video for me. And we also actually can. So shall do bring this to TV screen. So you could see this connected. So from the small screen to the larger one. Really love your show, by the way. Stop here. <laughs> Fast forward 10 seconds. So do back to the front page. So you could see actually this is totally speech control. And here we also have an AI camera. And later on I'll show you because this is actually, you can have the a video phone call with your family and we talk about, let me show you this. So do call the office. And you can see actually it's the a camera here, right? It's actually lifting. And this is our office. Hello to all. So hello to all. Actually, they are all the people born after 1990s. So right now, Mr. Sa, we are showing that V86. Uh, later on, that's how right? OK, I'll see you later. Xiaodu, hand up. So this is just a TV screen, but actually it's not just a screen. And you can enjoy the TV show, make a phone call, video phone call, and also it's speech control. We know a lot of people actually so fascinated in the configuration. So we look at the configuration, actually, it is, first of all, 86 inches. And also 120 hertz. 
and also it's good for your eyes and the 30W, the old yields. And also give you that Adobe system as well. And also we have this the a lifting camera. So from the audio to video, actually we give you the highest standard of configuration. Then the question is, what's the price? So normally the market price around 15k. Our price is really affordable. Of course, cannot uh, cheaper than that. So this one, V86, the price is 12,000. 880. And the price for today is 8,888. So place the order now. The original price twelve thousand eight hundred eighty-eight. Now the price for today is eight thousand eight hundred eighty-eight yuan. You can't miss the chance. It's unbelievable. And by the end of this year, we have the a V seventy-five. So that's seventy-five inches, the size of the screen. So actually, this is so convenient. So place the order via Baidu app or Jingdong.com. So these are the two products actually introduced today. So we have really good price today. <笑>五十台旋转屏作为我们这一波的福利五十台旋转智能屏通过百度 and also we have a lucky draws. Uh, so for the viewers, if actually you are the lucky one, then later on they will we will contact you. All right, coming to our third new products. These are Earphone Pro. Very the a fashion what one, and also it's a noise free, and also it's a 40 dB. Uh, so the battery actually can last for a really long time. And actually for this really good to enjoy like the uh, classics <laughs> or jazz. <laughs> so this is really provide you that noisy canceling the headphone or earphone. So it's so quiet. Actually, for me, that, that when you speak, it seems like you speak at another room. So, so quiet. So let me sleep for a little bit. So for this product, it's really good for the office people or students, uh, for hello. So on the bus or the train, the plane, you want to have your personal, quiet, tranquil environment. Here, this one is what you need to have. And also we provide a new function and we talk about this is actually this is the first time we bring that to the earphone. We talk about like for the phone calls, actually that phone call can be recorded and AI can help to translate that voice to written letters. 
So you could see actually on the right screen, actually the a phone call conversation actually that's actually can record it and also can provide it in the written version. So you can the cap that written, you can keep that the written version for your reference later on. So this is actually for people who have a lot of phone call every day. This is something you need to have. It's so smart. And also maybe later on you can connect that with the a the a subway station because I wear that. I just because it's so quiet, right? I just I help you to ex ignore the whole environment. The, actually, you can miss your station. So when someone call you, actually that's the had a different DB. So we already identify that. And also the price. The market price normally is above the four digi digital numbers. And this one, today, the price is 699. And the price now for today's special price is 399. What are you waiting for? Place the order now. Bring it back home. So this is a very, very special price. Just three ninety nine. So this is the a third generation actually. Pro so this is our third product and the fourth one already with me and here you go this one and this is actually a dictionary pen. We talk about if you scan the word, I can it can provide you the meaning. Actually, Baidu app also actually have that the a picture. So basically, that also can help you. So Baidu app also can translate that page. And this one actually during the reading because this is like a pen. So basically, you can also screen the whole line or a single word. Actually, we have the a dictionaries embedded inside. So maybe actually we can also test. So maybe we choose a book. So maybe let's try. So let maybe find any word you don't know. I don't know actually whether I can know all of them. Or maybe change another one. 
<laughs> change to an easier one, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe give a big test, right? So it's not a test for you, it's a test for the pan, right? It feels like the pen is faster in the translation. I have to think about it. What is the meaning for the first word? And also I can actually choose specific words and also you have the pronunciation of the word. Each one of the words we could have a, a, a separate pronunciation. So I would like to see the whole translation, full translation of this sentence. Now I would like to scan another time. So actually, I have to scan every line. So if you have this pen, you could actually talk to your key. I don't think she, she could have this uh, TN8 vocabulary. So for a kid, if she wants to learn English, so I think this is very useful, especially for the students who need to participate in CT4, 6, and TN8 examination. This is very useful. Actually, you could actually talk to this pen. And also for people in the financial sector and the law sector, maybe they have to read a lot of English articles, and this one is very useful. And actually today, we have a special pen designed just for CCTV with CCTV logo on it. So if you say probably each one of us can get one of these, I think we don't have much chance. So first, I would like to tell you the price. Make a guess. I think it's at least a thousand yuan, right? Between a thousand yuan to two thousand yuan. All right. I would like to announce the price. The price is nine nine nine. But today we have a special price, six hundred and ninety nine, and then you could have this pen. You could actually place an order in the Baidu application. Yes, and um, if you place an order today, and also we have the lucky draw, and during the lucky draw, you could have this special version with CCTV logo on the vocabulary pen. This is a translation pen. Now it's time for the lucky draw. So if you're watching our live streaming, you could actually participate this lucky draw. Congratulations to you all. I hope in the future more and more people could use the AI products from Baidu. Actually, today I could feel in the past few years, we are able to feel AI is around us. AI is everywhere in our life. And also AI is bringing more convenience to our lives. Thank you very much for your introduction about the Baidu products. 
I believe right now many people are placing orders for these new AI products. Now I would like to introduce my colleague Wang Bibi. So right now she's standing in front of a community and she's trying to discover what AI can bring us in our daily life. Good morning, I'm CCTV reporter. I'm also an EXO of AI. I'm now at standing in the Dashla Hutong. And this place is very famous in Beijing. And inside of the Hutong, I would like to try to understand the functions of AI in our daily life. But actually, I already got lost. But as I still have power in my mobile phone, I'm using the Baidu earpiece, so it could help me with the navigation. So now we are about to enter into one of the Hutong in Beijing. I already find the route, but still I need to identify the direction. I really like to take a walk inside of this hutong, but without navigation, I'm easily get lost. For this alleys and the hutong, it have a long history. There are many elderly people living inside of these alleys, and in this place, we have over ten people above a hundred years old. So today, I'm going to visit one big family. We have elderly people with over a hundred years old, and also we have young kids. I believe. For different members of this family, they have different needs in their life. So I'm quite curious on how AI provide help to this family. Good morning. I'm the CXO from CCTV on AI. Very nice courtyard. Very spacious. Good morning. I'm the CXO from CMG. Wow, well, we could see such a big family. Today we have a guest. Oh, wow, so smart in your house. And also you could see the curtain is opened. Granny. Oh, Granny is watching television. <laughs> Welcome to my house. Xiao Du, it's so hot inside. So right now you could see all of these AI devices has been turned on. So also you could see for these um, old style fan could be also opened. And this one is also very smart. How could you control this fan? So I believe we have a intelligent plug. So for some of the houses, and actually we have very old style devices and parents. Uh, however, if we have a AI socket, we're able to control all of these devices. So I hope in the future, say I want to sit and then the sofa can move together with myself. Maybe in the future we could realize all of these functions. I think you're quite good in your physical condition. So actually we do have a AI appearance and also it can actually check your physical condition. It will capture some of the indexes of your body. So I would like to try it. So for example, this one is very useful. This is a body fat scale. So also it will announce your weight and also talk about the body fat percentage. 
and also you could open a new account and then to store all of your personal information inside of this scale. All right, very interesting. This is an experience from Wang Bingbing in a local community. <laughs> so lucky that you don't have a height measurement scale. And you could see as Bingbing just step on the scale and also her weight was reported by the scale. So actually from this video you could see we could see the AI products are everywhere in each household. So actually in our neighborhoods I believe many people are using the AI devices. Maybe some people they're already using some of the AI devices but they don't understand they're using this. So I think in the future AI will bring us a lot of conveniences in travel, life, and other aspects. And this will also help with the development of our society. So when we are working on AI, we are thinking that AI could be applied to every aspect, and people can feel the power of science and the technology. We just talk about travel, talk about life, and now we enter into a new sector. We will talk about the use of AI in different industries. And I believe AI could be used in different industries. So for you, which one is your favorite function of AI? So it reminds me of the Tokyo Olympic Games and also, we have utilized the AI technology in the Olympic Games. Well, actually, AI is providing a lot of support for the athletes. So it will help them to improve themselves. Yes, indeed. AI has been applied in competitive sports. So maybe in the future, we don't need coaches. Well, right now, AI is giving some support to the coaches to train the athletes. So right now, we have a stunning scenario here. So this is a 3D plus AI training system for the diving team of China. So now you could see the system is processing some of the information. It captures some of the image. So by having this information, it could actually analyze the movement and the terms of the athletes. So speaking of diving, I would like to invite one of the guests. So now I would like to invite the chairman of the China's Diving Association. So we will have a video conference with this person because right now she is in isolation right now. Good morning, Madam Zhou. So right now we're in the live streaming about the 2021 Baidu World Conference. So right now I am sitting alongside with the co-founder Robin Lee. So you're still in quarantine, right? Yes, we're still in quarantine. I think it's been over one week. Ten days, actually. All right, almost there. Are you familiar with Madame Zhou? Well, I'm familiar with the name because we pay a lot of attention to the diving team and they always deliver excellent performance. But for me, I met with Madame Zhou for a couple of times because we are from the same place. Madame Zhou is from Wuhan. Uh, especially when Madame Zhou claimed the gold medal, I'm only eight years old. 
So I'm actually cheering for the performance of Team China with my family members. That is in 1984. I still remember Miss Zhou. She actually came the last gold medal for the Olympic Games. This is that was quite amazing. Especially, I think it's quite a beautiful sport for the diving. And right now, you are still accompanying the diving team. I will talk about it's the dream team, the diving team. Actually, congratulations for all the gold medals and all the medals, and also applause to all the athletes and also the people behind the curtain. Right now you are still in quarantine. I believe you actually also provide you some quality time to rest yourself and also to reveal the whole journey in Tokyo. So share with us your thoughts, your feelings. So right now we're the whole team in quarantine. So I'm sorry I cannot be there with you for a Baidu conference 2021. And here I would like to take this opportunity to first appreciate everyone's support to the diving team. And this time, actually, we had a really good performance at Tokyo Olympics 2020. We talk about a dream team, but we should say that every model, actually, that's the credit to the whole country. Actually, that's not only for each individual, actually, it's a teamwork. It's a hard work paid by the whole team. So also would like to thank ODA stakeholders and also for the people that give us a great support because you are our back. And also thank you Baidu for your Baidu cloud because technology really power our strengths. I think that it's actually should the majority of the credit actually should belong to the athletes and the coaches. So talk about dream team this time at Tokyo Olympics 2020. <laughs> actually, it's not people. Actually, I have a really famous like the a MOD. Actually, with my image, actually, is with the a mask on and this a oxygen mask on. Actually, every time when we see the a games of the diving team, actually, we do not need to really feel that out of breath because of the nervous. Actually, we feel really assured. I believe that I should give the a big appreciation to the high tech because AI, because if I do AI, right now also apply to our day to day practice, right? Yes. Because every day at our training course, the a Baidu AI team actually stationed there accompany us and also provide AI service to us. We know actually diving actually very special. We talk about the whole process actually less than two seconds. So from the jump to entry actually just around 1.8 seconds. And also during the whole process actually it's a lot of complicated moves. So Baidu AI really help us to give us that a quick response. So every movement we need to give the immediate feedback because based on that feedback we need to correct the movement to find the solutions so basically ai help us collect the data and also do some analysis solve some difficulties for the diving team and for us we always actually pursue the excellency right we have the high standards right now this set of the a high tech actually just within three seconds give us the whole feedback actually when we actually during our business travel actually also can give us the a feedback basically actually can share that the a information online so we know how we can correct our movement actually is everything so clear so it's almost four decades since you claim your medal right so if we think about that four decades ago that your time compared to the current times. So right now, the athletes actually they can improve themselves in an even faster speed than your time, right? You know, the world's totally changed. 
So because technology really empower us, actually technology you can really compare today versus yesterday, right? Because in my time we could not really see our movement because like in 1984 we couldn't really think about that. Just really the fewer TV. That live to broadcast the competition, but right now I think about technologies and also actually the whole AI team was there, right? So that actually is also can improve themselves in a very faster speed and also there the a the sports live also actually extended. So we talk about this team efforts because of the whole team with the coaches, with the, all the AI people, and because of all your efforts, we make that dream come true. And also hope you can free from the a uh, quarantine that they can we enjoy the infamous dish, the dry noodles from Wuhan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Joe. And we should our diving team a bright future with more glories. Thank you so much. So it's a really actually the, a good time for athletes and the coaches to rise themselves. But for athletes, actually, they think up all different ways to keep up their the, a performance. So as Madame Zhou introduced, so just in three seconds, we can get the feedback from AI. Because we talk about camera actually can capture more than 10,000 pictures in a second. And also actually from different angles. So you could see actually this one movement from uh, the 360 degrees. We show you the a movement, how the athletes did this movement. So that from the head, from the jump, from the entrance, entry. So all these actually can reflect from the number and from the numbers, actually, we make that analysis. So actually, maybe we can get the solutions even faster than the coaches. So actually, can bring back each and every detail of that diving movement. So speaking of this, actually, this technology can apply to different sports, right? So actually, for the sports team, for the diving sport, and also basketball, actually, the track and field, and the basketball, the swimming, actually, a lot of things actually happen in a really fast speed. We talk about that, the human analysis versus machine analysis. Of course, machine, a lot of things can be quantified actually can provide in a lot of details, like ping pong, table tennis. <laughs> so before serving the ball, a lot of actions, then what's the purpose of that? Actually, AI can also tell you the answers. So AI beyond our imagination, not only limits ourselves to sports, actually also apply to a vast of industries. So. We look at the bigger picture of industries, how AI can empower different industries. A born of a cup of water. A journey for a degree of electricity and a selection of a single fiber. Think it's just normal day-to-day -day life, but actually you couldn't know how tremendous change happened. So big data actually helped to change the a supply pressure of the water and electricity supply, self-screening in the manufacturing sector, AI chips actually give them the power to change. We right now embark a new journey toward intelligence area 
from uh, collecting data to self-learning to the different application in different industries, regional economy, so it's the data plus algorithm. We look at the finance world, that smart cities, smart ports. Intelligence China. So just through a video clip, I believe our viewers can get more understanding about how AI embedded to different industries. Of course, we just select a different scenarios, but actually we talk about just a small short video clip and I will show you the every area of different angle. And today, we also invite our speakers, Mr. Wang Haifeng, the Dr. Wang Haifeng, the Chief Technology Officer. So we talk about AI actually can participate in water management. And I also heard one data, I don't know whether it's correct or not, uh, talk about every year in the pipelines because of water leaking. We talk about that water leaking or the a malfunction happened in the pipelines. We wasted 700 size of a Xihu Lake. So we talk about China's vast places. We have so many pipelines. So we talk about the water waste every year in China. It seems like, of course, sometimes in our home, we also have face this kind of the DA problems. But actually, think about that total number. If we count each and every household all these water linkage problems together, then that equal to the a size of 700 Xihu Lake. So that's a huge number. So here we show a video clip. This is in Quanzhou, and that's the a starting point of the a Silk Road, a maritime Silk Road. And here is the beautiful environment plus the a profound history assets. So this is ancient Quanzhou, and you could tell that the glory happened throughout the whole history. And also we can spell. The tea flavor. This is the hometown of our green tea, Tie Guan Yin. Can I get a cup of tea here? So actually, we just got from the a tap water. So tap water is okay, not impact the taste of the tea. You will know. So these are actually tea guan yin, and this is a variety of oolong tea. We talk about the Quanzhou actually is very famous of its tea, and we also talk about why the quality of water is so tasty. So this is a bottle of water I got from the A pipeline. And the gentleman next to me is the people working for the A tap water industry. So let me show you another bottle of water, and later on, so take a guess, which is the a water from the tap. And which bottle is purified water? Can you tell? I can't tell. So the purity here actually is really high, less than 0.2 NTU, then which means it's a high quality water. So we talk about actually the water quality here in Quanzhou is actually it's reached the same standard as the a tap water or the a purified water level. So here is the a industry. Actually, I believe it is more or less like the other water plant. 
So this is the a waterworks. We could see that a lot of things are actually already is see automatically managed. We talk about the whole system actually based on the a water resources brain. So this big brain actually do the a supervision and allocation work. So this is a fancy word, but how actually inside that water-related affairs brain, how it operate? With this big screen, you could actually understand the network of water resources in Quanzhou. Based on this system, Quanzhou has resolved a big issue. So in the past, based on our experiences, we will actually monitor a pressure value manually and also we will monitor and adjust the water pressure and this will actually cause the explosion or crackdown of our water system so right now we have this system we could actually analyze the precipitation and also to dynamically adjust the water supply so this will reduce the risk of the crackdown of the water system so i'm actually quite jealous of the changer people because in the past when uh, uh, in the future, if we are visiting one of the grocery stores in Quanzhou, you could actually just enjoy tap water instead of the purified water. So in the future, if you are going to visit Quanzhou, you could enjoy the tea that have been made from the tap water. That is why Quanzhou is considered as one of the World Heritage Sites. And we just talk about the brains, the AI brains. It is not just focusing on the management of the water resources, and also it will help to better allocate the water resources in different parts of Quanzhou City. So first of all, it will protect the water and also to monitor the quality of the water for all the procedures of the water resources and supply. It will be more intelligent. So in the future, Quanzhou people can enjoy safe drinking water. And also, as we could see, it is quite intelligent in managing the water resources in Quanzhou. It is not just protect the water resources. We could also save some electricity. So for AI, it could actually bring better environment in Quanzhou also it could also conserve a lot of resources in Quanzhou. So by having this network system, it could actually adjust the water supply pressure. So in certain period of time, if people are not using the water resources, so we could adjust down the water pressure. So earlier, Quanzhou is identified as one of the World Heritage Sites. So welcome you all to pay the visit to Quanzhou. And you don't have to buy drinking water. You could just enjoy the water from the tap. Except for water, another important part for our life is electricity. So let's see, what is the role for AI? So here is in Xinjiang from 2010, we're able to transfer some of the electricity out. So if you are in Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangdong province, some of the electricity are actually transferred from Xinjiang. So as this is a high voltage transportation, it is very risky. But now with the support of big data and AI technology, right now we have a UAV is having the expectation of the electricity. So in the past, how we do this inspection? In the past, we have to do it manually. We use telescope, and also we have to use our ear to hear about the sound. And sometimes in severe condition, adverse weather condition, we still have to do it. And we have to climb up to the mountains. It's very dangerous. And also every day, we have to review some of the photos we've taken. It takes at least two to three hours. 
So right now with the UAV, we could actually inspect the electricity supply covering over 20 kilometers per day. So right now we are at a substation. So this is actually one of the largest substations in Xinjiang. Right now we have a UAV is doing the inspection in this substation. So right now for the whole state growth network, we all use the UAV to do the inspection. So now we also have a robot here. So what is that? So this is also a inspection machine. Now you can see for this machine, we ha it has two eyes. For one of it, it will provide infrared scanning. And for the second eye, it will do a lot of um, shooting of the photos of the substations. This will also help to fix some of the malfunctional substation poles. So we also setting up special routes for this device. It feels like it's moving backwards. So in winter, uh, we have to build a special road so that um, the camera will not be broken down. Also, we have two antenna here. And during the inspection, some of the data will be transmitted through the antenna. And also, we have a brain for this device. So it will store relevant information backstage. This is very interesting. Speaking of Xinjiang, people think, well, it's so far away. But that is not the case. After watching this video, I, I was thinking maybe the electricity we're using right now is coming from Xinjiang. They have to transfer all of this electricity to Beijing. In the past, we need to have a lot of human resources to maintain the safety of the transfer of the electricity. It is quite dangerous. And also, in the southwestern part of China, we also see a lot of people who have to travel between mountains to ensure the security of the transmission of the electricity. Yes, indeed, it is a very tough job, and also it is very dangerous. So that's why we are working with the state grid company, and we are launching a lot of UAVs to do the inspection instead of human beings. This will help us to improve the efficiency and also remove the risky areas for human beings. I just saw in the video we have many UAVs and also we have some robotic machines to do the inspection. They are collecting information and also in the back end we have AI to analyze the information they collected. And we have some sensors installed in those AI devices. In the past we only capture those information with our eyes or with our ears. So I think we just understand how to transfer the water. And now we are seeing another scenario, the electricity transfer. Yes, we have some AI technology to help to allocate and to transfer the electricity. And for AI, it is not just trying to help one industry. It could also help to bring a new look to a city. Let's take a look at the video. I believe all of you are very familiar with this city. Let's see how AI help with this place. This is an ancient town, an old town of Lijiang. Because of AI, this has brought a lot of conveniences to this place. And also, this is a demonstration site for scientific innovation. Let's see how science meets the history. And today, we will pay a visit to the city of Lijiang. So we have so many visitors here. How we manage the population flow? And today, we have a 5D experiences. 
So this is a volunteer card, and also we have an application. So I would like to emerge myself into a 5G scenario. So first of all, I would like to be one of the volunteer in this city spot. So I already received a notification. It said 20, 200 meters away from myself, I saw an illegal parking of a bike. So I will go to that place to see what's happening there. All right, so now I find the illegal parking of the bicycle. Now I have to move this bicycle to designated area. Wait a minute. Why I have to carry this? I have to unlock this bicycle and then to bring to the designated place. So in this signal spot, it does not allow the entry of the bicycles. Just one minute. I will bring it to a designated area. I think we have a intelligent device here. It already captured the illegal parking of the bike. And right now, I have received a second notification. It said there is garbage in certain areas of this city spot. I think I may have like 50 meters to this garbage. So this is the information captured by the system. If you look at this, you will see why Lija is always clean and tidy. Except for routine maintenance, we also have the intelligence system to monitor the environment of Lija, and also it will inform all the volunteers and the working staff to clean all of those garbages. The city brain can help the maintenance of the city spot and also remind the work staff about some of the risky behaviors. The system just sent me another notification. They said uh, one person is entering into a dangerous zone. Now we are seeing some passengers they're trying to play around in this place. I also received notification. We, we found these people, some of their belongings were actually fallen into the water. I think uh, safety is our top priority. I think belonging is not that important, but the most important thing is their safety. I am an engineer. I always visited uh, Suzhou because there is a high-tech zone there. With years of development, this place has become a high-tech factory. This, is ha this place also has an intelligent production line. And today, the reason we are coming here is to check the operation of the AI system, the production line. So now you can see we have an AI robot is helping us to carry the goods. So for me as a senior engineer, if I hear the sound, I understand the quality of some of the products. Well, this sound is not qualified because the sound is not that smooth and also have some sharp sound. Just listen to this one. This one is qualified one. I think it's similar. How to tell the differences? I believe you're far away from this industry because for our workers, they have to stay on post for, man for a very long hour so they understand which are the colorful, qualified products? Just try again. No way, I just check a hundred sets of the sound. It's very difficult to tell the difference of the qualified products. Just take a look at our AI products. With our R&D, we have convert the sound into waves. And with AI, we can analyze the result. We actually empower our system with new technology. So we can capture the data for all the qualified products and these qualified products. And then the, we could improve the production line. So how do you feel? 
Well, I think this one is quite effective. It could help to improve the efficiency of the production and also improve the qualification rates for some of our products. Where are you going, Xiao Du? So I am an intern. I'm trying to find one production line and try to do the troubleshooting. Xiao Du is going to find engineer Liu for troubleshooting. So, me and Xiaodu here to check. Xiaodu, what are you doing here? I'm looking for master because we had a learning. And Mr. Liu is in the business trip and you also can ask the a platform RTA line 2 OP230. So this is the knowledge platform and it provides you the solution. So do not need to really look in for Master Liu. Before actually is based on the experience, actually the handover from one generation to another. And right now we have this DA knowledge platform basically can the, uh, gather the wisdom of the masters to this knowledge platform. So this is knowledge sharing platform. So you could see that AI really bring the value and the benefit to you and that's the meaning of my life, my job. You can see actually one that is the uh, uh, Lijiang, that's in Yunnan province, a very famous site, same places. Another is manufacturing base in Suzhou, Jiangsu province. We talk about AI, no matter in the touring system, the city management, or in the manufacturing industry, it's no boundaries. It actually give you a really promising future. So talk about industry. So what's the driving force behind? So AI as the a key driver for the new round of the A technology evolution. You could see actually the A equality checking, the water resources management, the A electricity management actually is not to limit ourselves to these. Actually think about industries. We hope that can bring the A transformation happen in different industry. So behind us actually is the A energies we devoted over the decades. We talk about we have a Baidu brain. And we talk about it's not the industry we just mentioned and actually think about different scenarios and working environment. And actually, this is also the one of the key scenario of AI application, help the companies to increase efficiency and also making new ground. So we look at the world, Baidu World 2021, actually you could see this is the a help us to record the a whole process and actually for key message, actually also help us to get the a notes and you could see actually all these information actually can share and also carry forward as the accumulation of knowledge and also help the, the industry and the companies to break new grounds and this is something we're looking for and also we to make ourselves toward this direction <laughs> So you can see like for the key knowledge, key information is right now is record here live. So we talk about this not just like the a subtitle, the everything we're talking about actually also can smartly summarize the key points of our today's Baidu World Conference. So we'll talk about our each meetings, our the a new product launch actually can give you that mini meeting minutes and also the key points. Right? How smart it is. 
，因为刚才讲的百度大脑的各种应用呢，我们通过片子或者咱们现场看哈，为了更立体的。So this is the a 如流 or the a info flow. This is the name of the products, and this is the AI working products, and help you to gather at meeting minutes the key points of the conference, the meetings. And what else we have? Here we go. Hello to you. I'm really glad to see you all. I'm so happy to be here. And you know me. My name is Zhu Rong, and I'm the first Mars rover. And my job is to transfer the a technology, the a data I detected from the right planet to the scientists on the ground. So I ask you a question. You know from A to Z about the Mars. Can we grow potatoes on the right planets? You are so smart. Actually, you throw the question to me. Actually, we didn't find any water resources, and also the environment is totally different from the Earth. So it's quite challenging to plant potato. It's not a hard question. I also have a lot of other skills. Or I give you a poem. So you can see that I can not only transfer the data to you, I also can make points. So from your points, we understand actually you have a really hard job to do, and also have a lot of things on your to-do list. I don't want to occupy too much time for you, and I keep your work. And if you have time, please contact me. And bye for now. So how you can make to that red planet? How you can find you? I want to go to the Mars, but right now we can't do it. Maybe I can send you a digital version of you, so I can send that digital version to the red planet. <laughs> Here we go, a digital version of Mr. Sa. Looking good. It's me. Okay. <laughs> So I'm ready on the right planet. Can I look fresh and like really in the space so it can put on a spacesuit? Wow, this is so cool. I can breathe even on the right planet. So it's how you latch to the space, to the outer space. And to deep to see, actually, AI can all present there. Also, leave the time to you. Talk about the Baidu brain. Now the time is yours, Doctor Haifu. 好，刚才我们看到的各种。Just now, we saw like the digital person. We look at application in different industry and also the products. Actually, all traces back to Baidu Brain. Baidu Brain actually is the a result of our decades efforts in AI and also provide technology support to different industries. AI is one of the products actually enjoying is embracing and a DEA. Promising future. At this new stage of development, AI is more complicated, and also we're breaking new ground as our new normal. And with the application of AI in different industries and in different scenarios, actually AI technology right now face lower threshold for the application. Right now. It's coming to that generation of 7.0, and also the threshold of developing AI is also lowering. 
So we'll talk about actually there are two key features of AI. One is the integration of innovation, and second is the a lower threshold. So I will also deep dive in details because right now we are in at the 7.0 generation of Baidu brain. Just now we saw the digital version of Zhu Rong, uh, the Mars Pro, actually have a really smooth communication and also can take questions and also provide answers. Actually, that's the a self-learning and also the a abundant data. Actually, we give to AI so that have a deep learning, and based on that. We had the a XR and the have the a stronger capability in the understanding language, and also to create the poem as well. So that's the augmented knowledge learning version, and also why it provides so accurate answers. And also have communication with the host. Actually, that's because of the AI model of that the AI augmented knowledge platform. We talk about it through different way of a learning language, either by saying or listening. Actually, by the brain. Also, we talk about by audio, video, language. Oh, actually, make by the brains smarter and transformed to a higher level to understand the world in different angles. Just now we saw the a digital version of people. You look at actually just say one sentence, then we can produce a one digital person. Actually, these are actually the integration of different technologies from audio to video to language to AR and also from the application angle. We look at actually the a innovation integration for different the a industries. We need to think about the new scenarios, the any the empty places. We need to make our food into that world, and also we look at the water management, the electricity management, and also to the a smart city. Actually, this is all the real scenario application, and also that's the result of integration. Innovation and also we talk about simultaneous interpretation as also available with AI. So that's the language wise. And also we look at the a hardware plus software. We know AI need to rely on the big data, and also the algorithm. We talk about this have strong capability in algorithm in computing, and that can produce a one plus one greater than two effect. And we have a coolant chip. So coolant chip actually helps to realize the faster algorithm. And we also have a the a whole whole chip that's the a cloud delivery and also apply to the home appliance or to vehicles. So that we can realize that voice interaction. And also with our partners, we produce different platforms. And also, that's the a right now we work with more developers to create different platforms like a deep learning platform. So you could see that AI actually is the a strong and more powerful. And that's also saying that the a threshold actually of AI is lowering. So we have this called Feijiang Deep Learning Platform. It's open to the public, and we talk about it's the core of the Baidu brain. For AI technology, it's a new driving force of the new round of the AI revolution. We know we have a grid, we have the a power generation, and it's easier for us to get access to electricity and have this platform of deep learning. Each and every developer and develop their own application based on AI. 
So put it simple, we make AI technology more complex and complicated, but the application of AI is easier and more simple. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sharing with us the, a new progress of a, AI and the brain of Baidu. We talk about the Fei Jiang. You just give us an example to talk about the learning platform. <laughs> So I would like to introduce this platform from two aspects. First, based on the needs of the uh, industry for the Feijiang learning platform, it provides a set of toolkits. It has some structures and also have a lot of models. And also we'll talk about the model factory. We have developed a lot of models emphasizing different kinds of applications. And also we have some supporting units for the learning platform. But this will allow more developers to use the learning platform and to better utilize the AI. This will also help to lower the threshold of AI. Even though we lower the threshold, we still need to have developers to do this development. And we also do a lot of training to the talents. We offer the platform, we offer the curriculum, you know, so we're offering online and offline classes. We also visit companies and uh, universities. We cultivate talents in different sectors of the society. For these talents will help to promote the intelligence world and intelligence China. As we have a large group of developers, do you get to know some of them? Yes, I talked to some of the developers. I remember one student, a sophomore student, and uh, in his hometown, he always suffered from wind and sandstorm. And actually, he developed a robot to help to protect the environment in his hometown. I also get to know another group of students. For some enterprises, they always troubled by QA and QC. They also use a learn, uh, utilize the learning platform to develop a QA product. This will help to improve the efficiency of QA in local areas, thus improve the efficiency of the operation of these companies. So for this phase of learning platform, it will actually help the developers to develop new products. So for these talents in the future, they may contribute a lot for the development of AI. So maybe we focus on the training of this group of talents. Yes, in order to have an intelligent society, we also roll out a training plan for these talents. So today, we would also like to announce a new project for Pi Baidu. This is actually a training platform for all the talents who are focusing on the development of AI. I believe for the society, they need a large group of AI talents. For our training classes, we will focus on the realities of the industry. For example, we have this Feijiang learning platform. They are also responding to the needs of the industry. We have some basic training classes, and also we have some competition. And we will also provide some R&D funding to the talents. I hope with all of these curriculums, we will provide support to the talents. I hope in the upcoming five years, we are able to cultivate five million talents who will be contributing in the AI development in China. We need human brain to empower the development of AI. I hope in the future, these people with different background of education, I hope more people can uh, participate in the course of development of AI.
Let's work together. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing. For Dr. Haifeng, and I could see he is very serious. And actually, during his briefing, he is actually restraining himself with the coughing. This is a typical tech guy. He is very serious. This is because of his work. Because of a large group of technical workers, they work together for a brighter future for human beings. Because of their efforts, they're able to bring us a lot of surprises and innovation. For the very last uh, section, before the release, I would like to have another lucky draw. We have the um, super gift. So we have the ultimate prize for our viewers. So please sign up with us. So for all of the prizes we have released earlier, we will include it in this very last prize. So if you're lucky, you're able to win all the products that has been released today. We have only one lucky viewer. If you read it, register your mobile phone, mobile number, so you're able to participate to the very last lucky draw. So let's see who is the lucky one. Congratulations. This is the uh, biggest prize. Please stay tuned with us to receive the prize. Now we are going to the last stage where we have another release of the products. Once again, I would like to invite co-founder, chairman, and the CEO of Baidu Group, Robin Lee. And he's about to release the Quantum 2 chip. And just now we are seeing some of the AI application. It has just covered different industries and different sectors. It also play a key role in these sectors and industries. But for all of these applications, these are supported by CHIP. By taking this opportunity, I would like to release the latest achievement of the CHIP. That is the Quantum 2 CHIP. As you all know, CHIP is the key to develop artificial intelligence. Back in 2018, we were able to release the first version, the version 1 Quantum Chip, and we keep up with our work. And today, we are able to release the Quantum 2 Chip. We are actually starting to develop chips of Baidu from 2010. This is because of our needs and with generations of work. Now we are able to release Quantum 2 chip, which has a lot of improvement compared to Quantum 1. Now I would like to show you a video so that you could better understand the Quantum 2 chip.
通过这样的方式，让我们认识了今天我们二零二一百度。Thank you, Robin。重量级的一款发布会。You just have a re-release of the Quantum Two chip, and I believe all of our people are paying attention to the development of this chip because it takes a long time for us to develop this chip. We have to be diligent in order to have the chip available to the public. And for this chip, it's available in different scenarios. For example, the smart travel, smart life, smart manufacturing, smart energy, etc. So for each one of these sectors, if they require a supercomputing power, it is a need for a high-power chip. So first, we focus on the algorithm, and second, we're focusing on the computing power, and third. We have to focusing on the data. So, in order to realize the AI service, we need to have a powerful chip to support it, and also we need to have a capacity to processing a large amount of data. So, for me, at the beginning, I think maybe it is difficult to understand the technology, especially for technology. It's hard to understand the rationale behind it. And today, it feels like I'm watching a science fiction film. So that actually that is the value of the technology. We should have our people understand and feel the changes that have been brought by the technology. Yes, indeed, that echoes with our theme for the era we love and for the sea of stars. So now we'd like to talk about the sea of stars. I believe soon by do we work with the. Another aspiration project of China. So I think AI will soon integrate with our new aspiration project. And also, we have a special guest today. Now I would like to invite the chief designer of the new aspiration project of China, Academician Wu Weigan. Welcome, Mr. Wu. Welcome to our show. <laughs> So I believe this is a space chair. <laughs> so do you still remember we have three astronauts because in the past few days we are actually watching the Olympic Games and some people are asking, do we still remember the three astronauts in the moon? And last time I remember Hu Jinghai, Peng and Chen Dong, they stay in the space for 30 days. And this time for the three astronauts, they have to stay for three months. So if we are busy working on other things, maybe we forgot for some of the astronauts who are staying in the space. But actually, for the next mission, we will have astronauts stay in the space for half a year. So at the beginning, we sent satellites, we sent uh, spacecraft, and now we are trying to develop the uh, space station. And also, we are working on the Mars exploration. We have the Mars rover on the red planet. Why we are doing this? Why human beings want to explore the deeper space? For human beings, we always have this aspiration for the exploration of the outer space and the universe. Especially, we have this aspiration to discover the unknown space. For the vast universe, what are the objects on the universe? When we are young, we are looking at the sky, we are looking at the star. People are wondering, where are they? This is because of our curiosity. So curiosity is born with us. If we have this curiosity, it will help us to endeavor ourselves for the aspiration of the space. I believe back in 1903, 
when we are learning the theories from Russian, the whole world is entering into an era to explore the outer space. For China, even though we started late as compared to other countries, but we do make a lot of achievements in the lunar exploration. For example, we are the first one to land on the far end, far side of the moon. And also we are sending astronauts. And also we are trying to build our very first space station. And also we have the Mars rover Zhurong to stay on the Mars for three months. <laughs> because for the a mandate task all finished by Zhurong, right now is his freestyle. So we see all these milestones for China's space program as a big stride.